Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, welcome, welcome, welcome. To all returning subscribers, thank you so much for your support. So today I am doing a video that talks about um, being an empath. I learned and discovered that I am an empath. Um, I usually say empath, you know, the word, the correct term is empath. So if you hear me say empath, just please disregard. Um, it's like tomato, tomato to me. But nevertheless, um, please like, comment, and share and subscribe to my channel. I would most greatly appreciate it. So what is an empath? What is it? You know, I know this word has become more recognized in the past maybe four to five years, if not a little less. Um, I always had the traits, the characteristics of it, but I just learned of the word in the most recent years and even more in within the past, you know, maybe two years, um, how much of one I am. So I had to start doing research, you know, studying, understanding, getting in touch, getting in tune in order to learn how to like cope with being one because it's, you know, empathing ain't easy. It, it really isn't. And it's a lot that you carry. It's a big weight that you carry on your shoulders. Um, so I wanted to do a video just in case anybody out there may have these things and not know that they are one. Or if you are one and maybe you feel like you're alone, there's nobody around that's like you, you know, you aren't alone. So... I am in like a uh, empath Facebook group. And when I tell you that group is amazing, like I love being in it. Um, it's so supportive. It's so dope. Um, people post a lot of questions, thoughts, opinions, comments, and stuff like that. And it's just like a no judgment zone. And you guys know how I am with my channel. Like I am very big on like no judgment zone, you know, come as you are, be who you are. As long as you do it respectfully, then, you know, there won't be any issues. But yeah, I'm all for um, just learning about yourself, you know, trying to navigate in this world based on whatever and whoever you may be. So I printed out some material because you guys know that I'm very big on anything that I share. I always have stuff to back it up, whether it's my experiences or if I'm giving advice, I try to like do my best to give you resources. So these are two things that I saw online and I printed them out and I wanted to like read about it, talk about it, share about it um, because it might be you and maybe you don't realize or maybe you do realize and if you do, we can discuss. So 15 signs you may be an empath. So here are some of the characteristics. Major empathy, easy, easily overwhelmed, strong intuition, love of nature, dislike of crowds, deep caring, problem solving, high sensitivity, need for rest, dislike of conflict, trouble fitting in, isolation, boundary issues, unique view, and easily overloaded. Now, all of that is in, is me to the T off top. So it's really interesting um, when you know there are things about you that maybe you don't understand. And then when you're able to have something that puts like a face to what it is, you're like, oh my gosh, like it, it's just <sighs> understanding is, is just everything. So this says, let's see. I follow um, Judith, Dr. Ju Judith Orloff on Instagram. Her name is J-U-D-I-T-H Orloff, O-R-L-O-F-F. -O -O -F. She's really good, but these are both things that I read from her. Um, this one was reviewed by Dr. Timothy Legg. Uh, he has a PhD and a CRNP, but pretty much they're both uh, based around what Dr. Orloff, you know, talks about in her books. So definitely follow her on Instagram if this is something that might fit you because her page may help you a lot, so... Anyway, so it says, Dr. Orloff, a pioneer in the field, describes empaths as those who absorb the world's joys and stresses like emotional sponges. Um, in her book, The Empath's Survival Guide, I'm going to get that book, Life Strategies for Sensitive People, she suggests that empaths lack the filters most people use to protect themselves from excessive stimulation and can't help but take it in surrounding emotions and en energies, whether good, bad, or something in between. So I always, like I said, had traits, but I think when I discovered that I had postpartum, I think it really 
pushed me to believe that I am one because of the certain things that was happening to me. Um, empaths tend to absorb everything, like, and, and to the point where I got physically sick. I literally got sick and I didn't understand, like, but now that I'm more aware, I'm able to like, I, I'm learning how to set healthy boundaries. Like I used to be a person that didn't know how to say no. I always wanted to be a helper, a fixer, a problem solver. And now I, I've learned to say, no, I don't have it. No, I can't help you. I'm sorry, that sucks. Like. I am not able to help everybody. I can't save everybody. And I think that's the number one rule that empaths need to learn is that we can't save the world. We can't fix the world. Like you can maybe do a step at a time, but it can't all be on your shoulders. It's not fair to you to carry that burden. So it says, here are some things. It says, you have a lot of empathy, which means that you can feel so much like care and concern for someone who's going through something even if you know you're upset about it or angry about it or made you feel a kind of way you can still understand and relate to the pain that someone else is going through and i i have that very well like i'm able to step outside my shoes and i can place myself in someone else's shoes and understand their hurt or their sadness or their concern and i'm able to connect just as a human and understand how they feel and why they feel that way and i can empathize with those feelings um closeness and intimacy can overwhelm you i have suffered from that well probably because i have trust issues but i definitely suffer from allowing myself to get too close to people due to issues in my past due to you know funny thing is to a lot of empaths are people who have had a lot of a harder life which is the most interesting thing a lot of us have had you know bad bad things happen to us but we're still able to like love which is the craziest thing but closeness and intimacy i'm very you know one thing about me is when I love, I love 100. Like, I'm like a light switch. So if I care about you, it is 100. If I don't like you, it's 100. Like, I'm, I'm a light switch. I'm either on or off. I can't do in between. I don't know how to, I don't know the happy medium. I just, either I will or I will not. No in between. So in a sense, you know, trying to build, it, it, it tends to overwhelm me emotionally because I don't, I don't, I don't like to get disappointed. I don't like to put myself out there. Like it's it's a lot when when you face so much like disappointment. So you have good intuition. Um, it, ever feel like you have a strong gut reaction to things that just feels off? Maybe you pick up on a dishonesty easily, or you just know when something seems like a good or a bad idea. This may be a trait. Um, literally, no lie. I predicted when my birth mother was gonna pass. I knew she was gonna pass my birthday. I couldn't explain it. I still can't explain it now. I was 15 years old. We were at UCLA Medical Center and I was with my grandmother there with her and she, you know, she was one of those in and out mothers that just pop in and pop out, be gone for a year, come back, disappear again. She was, you know, one of those. So that's probably why, I mean, that's part of why I have such bad abandonment issues. But um, she showed up, she was at the hospital and I just was like, she's gonna pass on my birthday. I just know it. And they were like, why would you say that? Don't say nothing like that. She's going to get better. And I was like, nope, she's going to die on my birthday. And sure enough, it happened. Then when my grandmother passed, I knew that was coming because um, signs were being shown that I needed to get to LA. And when it happened, she was like shutting down and everybody was like, no, she's going to get better. No, it's good. she's going to come out of it. She's so strong. And I was just like, I just felt her, her spirit. I felt her energy. And I knew she was tired. Like I just, I just felt her tired. That's that's the only way I can explain it. Even till today, ten years later, she was tired, and I felt it. I felt it, and and I knew she wanted to go. I knew she was ready, and I just told her. I was just like, you know, I know. That's all I could say. I was just like, I know. Like I whispered to her. Like she was, she could still. She was coherent enough, you know, because she was talking for a minute. But then after a while, she only they you know, they made her to where she was comfortable and, um, you know, to where she couldn't respond. And I just, I just told her, I know, you know, and, and she passed like the next day. Like it's the craziest thing. Um, I have very detailed dreams to the point where when I wake up, I have to 
text them. I text a lot of them to Candace. I text them to Jordan. Like I'll write it because I have, because you know, once you have a dream, if you don't like speak about it in that moment, if you go back to sleep, you'll forget about it. But I have such vivid dreams. I see faces. Like I see, you know, things. I just, it's just, I have such incredibly wild dreams that some of them just don't make sense. And then I always, I always try to like, make sense of them, but I don't know what be going on in my brain <laughs> to where I have dream the kind of dreams that I have. Um, yeah. I had I, I was going to speak about a dream that I had um, a little while ago, but I don't want to like speak it into reality. So I don't, I don't want to say it, but um, as an empath, you might put a lot of faith into your instincts when making decisions. Although others may consider you impulsive, you're actually trusting your intuition to guide you to the choice that feels right for you. That's how I move, period. Point blank, period. You are drawn to nature. Hello, y'all know I love nature. I always said that I either want to live by the beach or in the country. It could not be in between. It could not be in between. I needed to live by the water or I needed to live in, in the country where it's nature. I, I needed one or the other in order for me to feel the peace that I was yearning for. So I'm in the country because um, I can't afford the beach. But anyone can benefit from spending time in nature. But empaths may feel more drawn to nature in remote areas since natural environments provide a calming setting space from overwhelming sensations, sounds, and emotions. You may feel completely at peace when hiking alone. I'm not doing that. In a sunlit forest or catching waves against the shore. Even a quiet walk through the garden or sitting an hour under a tree may lift your spirits, soothe, soothe overstimulation, and can help you relax. I always tell you guys, I live in the country. I'm around peacefulness i just needed that's why i tell anybody who asks me about moving i'm like i needed peace i needed peace that's the only way i can explain to you i needed peace and i was craving it so i had to go where i could get what i needed in order to heal my spirit you don't do well in crowded spaces i am not a clubber i never have been i did do the club thing when i was younger only because i felt like i kind of had to and i felt like i needed to do it because i never wanted to do it later in my life so but i when i went i never was i've never been the party starter i've never been the person that's lit and live even though I, we was lit on my live the other day but um i've never been that person that just is like yeah let's go to the club let's go listen to let's go dance let's go bop like i just never been that person um I just don't like the, it's too much energy. It's just, it's too much for me. It's just, ugh, you're just, ugh, it's just too much going on. Um, empaths can feel easily overwhelmed by feeling everything more intensively. You can easily sense how others feel. You'll likely have a hard time handling the emotional noise from a crowd or even a smaller group of people for an extended period of time. When you're picking up on negative emotions, energy, or even physical distress from people around you, you may become overwhelmed or physically unwell. As a result, you may feel most comfortable on your own or in the company of just a few people at a time. That is me. Um, and I hate to say that, like it sucks to say that because I, I, I tell like, I think Charles is now understanding it more. Like at first he didn't understand it, but once I started making him read about it and I was sending him things about it, he's like, dang, that really is you. Like it just makes more sense once you, because a lot of guys don't, under, I think empaths are more females. You do have some men that are as well because you do have, you know, some men that are very in tune with their emotions and who they are. I don't think that they're as um, able to process and make sense of it like a lot of women can but they do exist they just don't realize that they are empaths um an empath doesn't just feel for someone they feel with someone so i text um a friend of mine this morning and no i literally will text people and be like hey how's it going they'll be like oh my gosh were you feeling my energy? And I'm like, something just told me to hit you up. You know, I can literally sense energy. I can tell if something's wrong with one of my close people. I can just feel it in the air. It's just the a thing that you can't really explain. But I feel when people that I know and care about are sad and I get sad with them. So I have to like really be mindful of like what I intake because like I said, I'll get, I'll get physically sick. Um, taking any, taking in others emotions so deeply can make you want to do something about them. 
Empaths want to help, but this isn't always possible, which can disappoint an empath, which is true. Like I'm such a fixer. I always want to make everything better. I want to make everything right. And when I can't, I feel so helpless. Like it's, it's the weirdest thing. So, you know, I love that I'm able to do my YouTube channel and I'm, I love that I'm able to reach people and help people with my, you know, my words, my advice, my stories, you know, entertain y'all, you know, you know, keep y'all laughing or crying or whatever y'all be doing off my videos. But I realized that I cannot fix everything. I can only do what I can do. And by me being able to reach and touch so many people that literally like makes my heart warm. So I'm realizing that I can only do what I'm able to do. Not a miracle worker, unfortunately. Um, caring about the suffering of others isn't a bad thing, but your concern for others' difficulties can overshadow your care for yourself. This can factor into compassion, fatigue, and burnout, so it's essential to save energy for yourself. This is very true. Um, sometimes a lot of us can give so much to other people that we tend to neglect ourselves, and then that was the period where I began to learn um, self-love and self-care because I would find myself trying to help everybody. I would find myself just giving and giving. I'm trying to like fix everything, and I had to realize like I have nothing left for me. You can't pour from an open cup. So. You know, it was so many lessons that I had to like learn from trying to fix everybody else's problems. I was therefore creating my own problem. And then when it was time for me to get help, nobody was around. So you have to like set boundaries and you have to know like we're all grown. Okay. We are all adults. It is, I have helped more people being a, a, a broke single mom. And I'm like, how you need help? You ain't even got no kids. Like you have to, I think that sometimes we want to help people and fix the situation so bad that the logic of it all, like common sense of it all shows they should be in a better position than you, but yet you're trying to help them. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of, sometimes the common sense has to overrule your, your caring and, and wanting to help and fix. Like you got to kind of put common sense into the factor of the situation and say, Hey, if I'm not there, somebody will still be there. So yeah. Empath may, empaths may be more vulnerable in man, to manipulation or toxic behaviors. Um, your earnest desire to help people in distress can leave you unaware of signs of toxicity. Toxic, toxicity. You may have a deeper understanding for a pain fueling their behavior and may want to offer to support them, but it's also to remember you can't do much for someone who is not ready to change. Empaths tend to attract narcissists and I've had my share of narcissistic people in my day. And due to me wanting or searching for love and acceptance, I would tend to want to help these type of people and, you know, show them that, you know, I love them or I care about them. It's okay. And, you know, let me, let me help you. Let me fix those issues with you. And in that they fed off of that. They fed off of my vulnerability and then they would suck me dry. So you have to be careful of trying to like, you have to be mindful of the characters you attract. You have to know how to like put up those boundaries and say, I can only deal with a person from afar, feed them with a long handle spoon. You have to do what it takes to protect yourself. And it may come off like, you know, you're being a, a, a hole or a B, it doesn't matter you have to self-preserve and protect your space. You have a high sensitivity to sound, smells, or sensations. Um, I have sensitive eyes. I think I may need glasses now. I need to go get my eyes checked, but I can't handle really bright lights now. Like I'm a natural light person. As you can see, I have no lights where I am right now. I have no ring light, no nothing. It's just literally my um, light coming in from my dining room. And I, at nighttime, I only will use like a lamp. I don't like ceiling lights. I don't like, um, people have their phones up so bright. I can't do that. I have my phone on dim. Um, I don't like, uh, when people have their high beamers on, oh my gosh, it like hurts my eyes to the point where I would get a headache. Like I have realized that about me, like a lot of lights besides natural light, it does affect me. Like, I don't know about anybody else, but I can't like, I realize that 
I couldn't work in an environment where there were no windows. Like a lot of people can work in an environment where there are no windows and be just fine. I can't do that. Like it would make me feel claustrophobic and confined. I need to be in a space where there's natural light. You need time to recharge. Heightened sensitivity to other people's pain can be draining. So infants may find themselves easily fatigued. Even an overload of positive feelings may exhaust you. So it's important to take the time you need to reset. If you can't escape overwhelming emotions and rest your senses, you're more likely to experience burnout, which can have a negative impact on your well-being. Needing a time alone is not, I'm sorry, needing time alone doesn't necessarily mean you're an introvert. Empaths can also be extroverts or fall anywhere on the spectrum. Maybe people energize you until you reach that point of overwhelming. Um, introverted infants need to take care, extra care to strike the right balance between spending time with others and restoring their emotional reserves. You don't like conflict. If you are an empath, you're likely to dread or actively avoid conflict. Higher sensitivity can make it easier to hurt someone, for someone to hurt your feelings. Um, my feelings don't typically get hurt as easily like that, but I don't particularly like conflict. Like I don't like confrontation. Um, I, I'm not, that's just not me. Like you have some people who, who live for it, you know, but I don't. And I just, I don't really like to have to do that kind of communication. It just, it, it really does drain me. You often feel like you don't fit in. Despite being highly attuned with others' feelings, feelings of others, many empaths find it difficult to relate to others. Others may not understand why you become so exhausted and stressed so quickly. You may struggle to understand the emotions and feelings you absorb or feeling like you're not normal. This may lead you to become more private. You might avoid talking about your sensitivities and sharing your intuitions so you feel less out of place. It is never easy to feel, it's never easy to feel like you don't belong, but try to see your ability to deeply empathize with others as something special it may not be common but it is an important part of who you are i have always felt like i didn't fit in i've always felt like i never had a place i never had a big group of friends i never had a clique like you know how some people from high school are still friends they still hang together it's like five or six of them you know i always would see girls on like girls trips like three four or five people and i'm just like oh my gosh why i don't have friends like that you know i just talk to my best friend about it because we're like the same way but um she not in bad though but um i always felt like i just never would fit in with like the in crowd and i would be like well what's wrong with me why you know you know what's what about me is not you know likable and it's like i'm a likable person like i'm i'm hella funny you know i'm hella cool but it's just the exchange of that energy i realized i don't vibe with everybody and i had to learn to be okay and accepting with that and like I said, being able to deeply empathize with others um, as something special, that's why I began to do my YouTube channel because I felt like even with everything that I have inside, I still have a story to tell. I still have things that about me that I know I can reach people and help other people, their perception on life or help, you know, I, I really wanted to like, in a way be, a vessel and 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 help other people see that you know even with all the hardships that i got through like you can too so me doing my youtube is my way of still allowing myself to protect my space but at the same time allow myself to give you know my unique gift to the world if that makes sense you tend to isolate so funny because <laughs> charles be like your idea of like a gray day is literally binge watching like a chick flick show and eating wing stop and cuddling with a blanket like literally it is because i find comfort in that solitude i find comfort in just knowing that i'm i'm safe and and i'm warm and i'm comfortable you know i hit corners i hit the corners all the time i go out or whatever but i just i love being home and i'm very cautious now and careful of who i allow in my home you know you got to be careful of the footsteps that come through your door because you don't know what kind of energies and spirits they carry with them like you have to be mindful so now i i'm in a place where i'm okay with not having a lot of gatherings i'm okay with not having parties in my home like here now i have a we'll have a couple people over um christmas time charles learned christmas time we had uh, you know my family over we cooked christmas dinner we was cleaning doing all this and all that and i used to tell him like throwing parties for me is super 
draining because I want everything to be perfect and I'm giving all, all of my energy trying to make everything perfect and trying to, you know, comfort other people and host other people and entertain other people. Like to me, it just takes everything out of me. So I don't really care to have a lot of gatherings like that. And Christmas time, he saw me cooking. So he was helping me. He saw me cleaning. So he was trying to help me. And so now after Christmas, he was like, I felt your energy. He was like, I felt you being exhausted. I felt you being tired. Like I felt, he was like, I never felt that before. I've never felt energy off of a person like that. And he was like, when I was doing it with you, it was almost like I was one with you. So I felt it and no lie. We probably, <laughs> that next night, no lie. We went to bed at like five o'clock and he was like, I ain't never went to bed this early. Like I was like, you probably, you know, was feeling my energy, probably was bouncing off of, off of me. He was like, I just, I just wanted to sleep. I just wanted to rest my body. And I was like, yeah, now you see what I've been going through. And he was like, oh my gosh, it's such a, like an awakening. He was like, now I get it. And so sometimes people have to go through something in order to better relate to you. But I promise you now he like, I don't want to have nothing at the house. No time. So he was like, maybe next summer, which is like Christmas to summer. But he's like, no, like I, I understand now the importance of needing to preserve the space in order to keep you at bay with your, your, you know, your energy level and your health. He was like, I want to make sure that you're good. And I see now so many people in your environment can drain you. So yeah, I tend to isolate. If you're an empath, you may struggle to turn off the ability to feel and find it impossible to stop giving even when you have nothing left. You may feel boundaries suggest that you don't care about your loved ones when the exact opposite is true. Because of the experiences of, of others have such an intense impact on empaths, boundaries become even more essential. They help you set limits around words, actions that make you feel negatively, allowing you to get your own needs met. When you start to feel unable to decipher your emotions from those of others, it may be time to explore healthy boundaries, setting with a therapist. And I'm gonna tell you, like my therapist has extremely helped me learn these things. You see the world in unique ways. Deeper emotional understanding can drive your intuition and you are likely to pick up on things that other people miss or make connections that aren't clear to anyone else. But this increased connection to the world can also have drawbacks. Environments that don't provide much space for emotional expression can dampen your creativity and sensitivity, leaving you disinterested, disengaged, and struggling to thrive. This is what I talked about in terms of being in a, in a certain environment where you can't thrive, where you can't grow, where you can't feel creative. Like you have to put yourself in an environment where you feel like you can grow. Now that I'm where I am, more in an open space, country, it's peaceful, you know, I feel at peace, I'm able to be creative. I'm able to do this. I'm able to give this. I'm able to, you know, do it. If I was still where I was living in LA, I wouldn't have, this wouldn't, this wouldn't have even been a thought that crossed my mind because I was not in a, a healthy mental and emotional and physical place. So therefore those creative juices would have never came to me. If you're struggling to manage overstimulation on your own and it affects your quality of life or keeps you from relationships or other personal goals, a therapist can help you learn to develop boundaries and identify helpful self-care approaches. Remember your needs and emotions are just as important as the ones you pick up with. Remember your needs and emotions are just as important as the ones you pick up in everyone around you. So this was a really good um, pamphlet that I read. And here's the one for Dr. Orloff. This is like an empath self-assessment. Have you been labeled as overly sensitive, shy, or introverted? Do you frequently get overwhelmed or anxious? Do arguments make you feel ill? Do I often feel like I don't fit in? Am I drained by crowds and need alone time to revive myself? Am I overstimulated by noise, odors, and nonstop talkers? Do I have chemical sensitivities or can't tolerate scratchy clothes? I can't tolerate scratchy clothes. I, it's the weirdest thing. Like, you know, you know, a lot of women wear like lacy bras and thought, child, I need my cotton. I don't play that. Do I prefer taking my own car places so I can leave early if I need to? Yes, I don't like, I don't ride with nobody. It's, it's not even funny. Do I overeat to cope with stress? Yes, and I'm working on that. Am I afraid of becoming suffocated by intimate relationships? Do I startle easy? Am I, do I react to strongly, do I react strongly to caffeine or medications? Do I have a low pain threshold? Do I tend to socially isolate? Do I absorb other people's stress, emotions, or symptoms? Am I overwhelmed by multitasking and prefer doing one thing at a time? Do I replenish myself in nature? 
Do I need a long time to recuperate after being with difficult people or energy vampires? Do I feel better in small cities or in the country than large cities? Do I prefer one-on-one -on -one interactions or small groups rather than large gatherings? So do that test and see and if you answered yes to one to five, you're at least partially one. If you have yes to six to 10 questions, meaning you are moderately one, and responding to 11 to 15, you have strong to empathic, empathic, ugh, ugh, empathic tendencies. Answering, answering yes more than the 15 questions mean you are full blown. So let me see how many I got. There's 20 questions. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I got 19 out of 20. <laughs> so, yeah. Being an empath is different from being empathetic. Being empathetic is when your heart goes out to someone else. Being an empath means you can actually feel another person's happiness or sadness in your own body. In empaths, the brain mirrors neuron system, a specialized group of cells that are responsible for compassion, is thought to be hyperactive. As a result, empaths can absorb other people's energies, both positive and negatives, into their own bodies. At times, it may even be difficult to tell if you're feeling your own emotions or someone else's. There are different types of sensitivities an empath may experience. Physical empaths, for example, are especially attuned to other people's physical symptoms and absorb them in their own bodies. Emotional empaths pick up other people's emotions and become a sponge for their feelings, both happy and sad. Food empaths are another type of empath who is in tune to the energy of food and may experience sensitivity to certain foods. I'm more of the emotional one. Being empathetic has incredible benefits such as a greater intuition, compassion, creativity, and a deeper connection to other people. But living in this state of high sensitivity also comes with its challenges, such as becoming easily overwhelmed, overstimulated, exhausted, or absorbing the stress and negative negativity of others. If a person is not aware that he or she is an empath, everyday interactions that others find tolerable could be causing an empath stress. Those who are not aware of their empath empathic abilities may be inclined to use food, alcohol, and drugs to unconsciously numb their emotions. I have been very um, open that I have had a food, um, a food addiction. I have really worked, because at first I used to just eat to eat. Now I don't like, that's why I don't be, I don't, that's why I only do, you know, my recipe videos or my, um, my cooking, my food restaurant videos, you know, here and there, because I, I just realized I just don't, I realize the problem and I'm, I'm working to fix the problem. So whenever I do it, it's more of an occasion, if that makes sense. Empaths are the medicine the world needs and they can have a profound impact on humanity with their compassion and understanding. As you learn to identify your special talents, you will find that you not only enrich your life, but you can also enrich the life of others too. The key skill is to learn how to take charge of your sensitivities and learn specific strategies to prevent empathy overload. So yeah, that's Dr. Judith Orloff. So are you an empath? Did any of this sound you know, familiar to you? Is this something that you have experienced? Is this something that you have had trouble with or battled with? You know, what are your thoughts? This is me. This is who I am. I'm learning to be more, you know, free about all of my imperfections. And I want you to do the same and just know that who you are, you are still special. You are still unique. You're still beautiful. You are loved. You are worthy of love. And if people do not understand you, then you need to do the work to find people who will understand you. And once you become more accepting of who you are, then you will be surprised at the doors that will open for you. So with that said, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I'm so sorry I was talking fast, but y'all know that I will easily make this an hour video and I'm trying to not. So I shall talk to you guys on the next video. Please follow me on IG at Love Some Lotta. If you need a life coaching session, you can book me from my IG page or my YouTube page. Um, please uh, drop your thoughts in your comments. I would love to hear from you per usual. And I shall talk to you guys on the next video. Talk to you later. Mwah.